this shed is a little bit like an island, I suppose. I've always been obsessed with islands. There's no internet, there's no telephone. I'm buried in greenness here and, and I can't really see the outside world. And that's so important when you're trying to construct an imaginary world, you need to turn in on yourself. This, <laughs> I love this bit of picture because this is a picture of, of me in, in the cave that, that is at the beginning of How to Train Your Dragon. I learnt that Vikings believed that dragons existed and so I used to go looking for these dragons in caves. Which one should I show you? Yes, the map. I'll draw very early on because then that gives me a sense, you a sense of, of place. So if I'm writing, you know, uh, writing a story that's based, for instance, the last book is based on tomorrow, um, I, I need to draw the map first so I have a sense of, of, of the place. So I'm writing a new series, for instance, <laughs> right now, set in a completely different world, um, and I've done a lot of drawing to, to, make, to, to feel me into the world. So this is toothless here. You, you have a lot of mistakes, as it were, before you get the illustration that, that really works. But you need to do it in quite a, a, a swift way for it to have that energy. I will often turn her to... I, I've got this, this bed in the shed, the bed in the shed, which I find very important to have a bed in a shed. <laughs> it's a very imaginative place. So I will often come here to this place to write this difficult bit or to get a new, a new idea. You know, endings, particularly when it's a world that I love so much, endings are always a bit sad, aren't they? So, so I never want to, it, it, it is the end of this 12 book cycle, but I'd never say never. I'd never say that I wouldn't ever go back into that world again.